The previous video traces the origins of the Great Awakening back over 200 years to the birth of the modern age in the 1800s, or 19th century. In this video we examine the appearance of heavenly signs which millennialists and biblical scholars had been expecting based on the book of Revelation 6.12 and 6.13. One such scholar, William Ambrose Spicer, was a Seventh-day Adventist minister and president of the General Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. In his book Our Day in the Light of Prophecy published in 1917 he examined the signs and singled out four of particular import. 1. The Great Earthquake. 2. The Darkening of the Sun and Moon. 3. The Falling of the Stars. 4. Distress of Nations, and Other Signs. Let's focus on his first point, the Lisbon Earthquake of 1755. It's difficult to exaggerate the impact of this event. It was felt throughout Europe, as far north as Finland, to Africa, even in Greenland and the Caribbean. Spicer quotes the geologist, Professor W. H. Hobbs, who estimated 60,000 people perished in six minutes. The earthquake struck on All Saints Day at 9.40 in the morning on November 1, 1755. According to contemporaneous accounts, it lasted between three and a half to six minutes, causing fissures in the city center five meters wide, or 16 feet. Tragically, in the resulting panic survivors rushed to the open space around the docks. Unaware of the impending tsunami and in shock from the powerful earthquake, they watched in bewilderment as the sea receded, revealing the open plain of sea bed littered with shipwrecks and lost cargo from earlier times. Only 40 minutes after the earthquake a tsunami flooded the docks and downtown area, as the wall of water was pushed up the Tagus River. Two additional waves followed. The third blow was a firestorm. Even though it was mid-morning, because it was a religious holiday people had lit candles all over the city. They were of course knocked over in the earthquake and a firestorm swept through the city which burned for hours. It was so deadly that people 30 meters away, or about 100 feet, were asphyxiated. The tsunami reached North Africa with 20-meter waves, or 66 feet, 3-meter waves were recorded in Cornwall on the British coast, and even Brazil reported tsunami damage. After surveying reports from that time, Spicer concluded, so, in an age of rationalism and unbelief, men's thoughts were turned toward God, and human helplessness and Earth's instability were recognized. The commander of an English ship, lying off Lisbon at the time, thus described the scene in a letter to the ship's owners, almost all the palaces and large churches were rent down, or part fallen, and scarce one house of this vast city is left habitable. Everybody that was not crushed to death ran out into the large places, and those near the river ran down to save themselves by boats, or any other floating convenience, running, crying, and calling to the ships for assistance. But whilst the multitude were gathered near the riverside, the water rose to such a height that it overflowed the lower part of the city, which so terrified the miserable and already dismayed inhabitants, who ran to and fro with dreadful cries, which we heard plainly on board, that it made them believe the dissolution of the world was at hand, everyone falling on his knees and entreating the Almighty for his assistance. By two o'clock the ship's boats began to ply, and took multitudes on board. The fear, the sorrow, the cries and lamentations of the poor inhabitants are not expressible, everyone begging pardon, and embracing each other, crying, forgive me, friend, brother, sister, what will become of us? Neither water nor land will protect us, and the third element, fire, seems now to threaten our total destruction as in effect it happened. The conflagration lasted a whole week. Thomas Hunter, Historical Account of Earthquakes, Liverpool, 1756, pages 72-74. Our look into the heavenly sign of the Great Awakening will continue in the next video.